I do believe uh, the Lord gave me a word to uh, uh, share it with you. We have Pachyapan at the back. I think I've showed, shared with you a story of a young child that he lost. And then the Lord gave him a new child. I think I gave you stories on how the Lord provided him and the entire house became come to know the Lord. And uh, so he's, he's the MacGyver of Papa's house. He does everything from, uh, from uh, uh, electrical works to whatever, you know. So and I think he, he did some work in Brother Sunil's house also. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. So are you guys ready to eat? It's going to be good. Um, last, last night we had a wonderful barbecue. Some of you missed it and we had plenty of leftovers. Uh, Tom, Tom had it, <laughs> but, uh, we had a good time, but we also had a good time of sharing some jokes. So I learned one last night. Okay. I'm going to share that because I shared my jokes. Nobody laughed because these guys are on another level. So, so somebody asked me if this is. Baba, what is this? <laughs> Somebody said it's called Sai Baba. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> you know, so I was thinking, how can I match to that level of jokes? I found few of them. Okay. <laughs> anyway, what is the believer's favorite fruit? Spiritual. <laughs> Nobody get it. Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to keep going. How did Joseph made his coffee? He brewed it. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you know Pharaoh was a athletic? He had a court. <laughs> uh, few more before you go nuts. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, what do you call a prophet who also a chef? Habaguk. That's a good one, isn't it? Uh, okay. Mm, let me see. I found... How did Paul greet his friend? Give me Phil Lemon. Okay, one more and then we'll go to the main subject. Okay. Which Bible character was super fit? Ab Salom. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's it. I'm stopping here. Lift up your Bible. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. Influence me this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will speak to us. We are not here to hear the voice of a man because the voice of the man can never bring anything eternally good. But Lord, I pray, stand here trusting that you will use me to deliver your word to your children to produce an eternal fruit that no one can produce. So we ask this in the name of Jesus. We humbly pray. Amen. So turn to someone and say, um, it's not sugar coated. <laughs> it's not sugar coated. So that's the title of this message. We are unpacking uh, the action in the book of Acts. So we are at the tail end of chapter three. So far, I'll give you a recap of what we just uh, uh, did on all these uh, almost nine weeks. Uh, the first we started before you continue, we started off how God started working in the lives of the apostles. And then we talked about two similar guys, but two different endings. One was Peter. The other one was um, Judas. Then we talked about the big day, the anointing of the Holy Spirit that came, that actually literally, you know, spoiled the people from ordinary. And then from Bozos to Bezos, how Peter, who was so scared uh, for about to confront and he got filled with the Holy Spirit. He got filled with the Holy Spirit and shared the gospel with great boldness. And then we talked about the great reversal. 
raw gospel, the birth of new beginnings, where how the gospel literally birthed inside of them, the prayer movement, the evangelistic movement, the gospel become vibrant in the society. And we talked a couple of weeks ago, ago a handout, not hand up. And uh, last week we ended up with uh, Don't Stare at Me, which is basically Peter was confronting with greater authority saying, man, I didn't do this. It's the Holy Spirit who did it. And uh, we ended up with that beautiful uh, story of how this guy was healed at the beautiful gate. Now, we will con continue this week. And uh, it's, it's a bit of a chunky portion we're going to read. It's up on the screen. So don't lose here. Even the 15 second shots, the recent survey says, for many people, it's becoming boring. 15 second shots. You know the shots? Some of you look like. And yes, you know, the reels, you know, it's for some of you, even that's boring. We made a 46 second shots about Isaac drinking chai and it went viral. Almost 2000 people watched it. That's the highest in Papa's house video. <laughs> anyway, no, there is another one on the topic of sex. So many people watched because I just put the topic sex. So people clicked it, you know, I don't know. And then they opened up. This guy was there. <laughs> anyway, there was no sex appeal anyway. But so suddenly, they, but we got so many likes at least. <laughs> but it's people were like so eager. And I, and I had this analytics says, uh, only 33% of the entire video, 46 per, you know, uh, seconds video, only 33% of 1,600 views watched the entire one. The rest of them were watched only 15 seconds. Can you imagine that? I mean, so I'm going to read a chunk of portion. Don't lose on me here. And uh, so it, it's important to know what's been said so that we can unpack few things. So we'll continue from chapter 3, from verse 17 to the rest of the chapter, and then four verses from chapter 4, and uh, we will wrap it up, see how the Lord leads. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, that's Peter confronting, not fully aware of what you were doing, just as your rulers did also. And so God has fulfilled what he foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that is Christ, Messiah anointed, would suffer. So repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking, regret past sins and return to God to seek his purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away, blotted out, completely erased, so the trines of your refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day. And that he may send to you Jesus the Christ who has been appointed for you who heaven must keep until the time of the complete restoration of all things about which God promised through the mouth of his holy prophets from ancient time. Moses said, the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your countrymen. You shall listen to him and obey everything he tells you. And it will be that every person that does not listen to or heed the prophet will be utterly destroyed from among the people. Indeed, all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel and those who came after him also announced these days. You are the sons descendants of the prophets and hires of the covenant which God made with your fathers saying to Abraham and in your seed descendant all the families of the earth shall be blessed it is for you first of all that God raised up his servant and son Jesus and sent him to bless you by turning every one of you from your wicked ways chapter four and when Peter while Peter and John were talking to people, the priest and the captain who was in charge of the temple area and of the temple God and the Sadducees came up to them, being extremely disturbed and thoroughly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming the case of Jesus, the resurrection of the dead. So they arrested them and put them in jail until the next day because it was evening. But many of those who heard the message of salvation believed in Jesus and accepted him as Christ. And the number of men came to be about 5,000. 
I know it's a quite a few verses we read, but you get the point what's going on here. Peter, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, confronting the very people that God has called him. You see, God takes the foolish people to confound the wise. Peter had no scholarly background. You all know he was, his, his trade was a fisherman. On the other hand, Paul, Bible says he was he was he grew up under the feet of Gamaliel. One scholar writes this: feet of Gamaliel is equal to today's Harvard's graduate, because he was one of those most reputed guy. Because in those days they had different rabbis running different school of thoughts. Jesus was also a rabbi. He had a different school of thought. What was the school of thought? The kingdom of heaven. Okay, so Gamaliel had a school of thought, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Enemesis, some pronouncing wrong, but you know, all these guys had different school of thoughts. So Paul grew up under the feet of Gamaliel. He says, I am for a Hebrew, I am a Hebrew. I know everything more than anybody else. God takes him and he says, well, thank you. I don't need that. Go to those lay people, Gentiles. And here was Peter. Go far away from me. I am a sinner. God takes, that's a good candidate. Go to those Jewish guys who had this head full of knowledge, but the heart is empty. You get the point? And here was Peter under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, reaching out to this most well-known worst crowd. You know, he's not talking to those guys who don't know anything about God. He's talking about God to these guys who know everything about God. And that's why he started off by saying, there are no notes, only these verses. We'll go back and forth. And then I have some points. I will share it with you. It, in the beginning, it says like this. That's why the topic I wrote it down. It's not sugarcoated. When he preached the gospel, he didn't sugarcoat it. He said, out of your ignorance, you did this. I mean, if you look at where we are right now, I don't know about how you see the world. The way I see right now, the church has married the world. Instead of church becoming a lighthouse to the world, that's what we are called, right? Yes or no? Now the church married the world and anything that is in the world is incorporated inside the church. That's why we have not a confronting message today. We don't, we sugarcoat it. We may, we say, Jesus loves you. Everything is fine. Is Jesus loves everybody. It's true. But that's not the whole gospel. Here, Peter could have said, you know, I need a volunteer. I need one volunteer. Sam is looking at me. Okay. So can you come up? Give it up for Sam. Come on. Okay. So imagine Okay, I'm a pastor. I mean, imagine, you can come here. <laughs> you can imagine that. Okay. And I want, I have a call to ev evangelize this bodybuilder who don't know Jesus. Okay. He's a stunt, stunt director from Bahubali or RRR or something, you know. So he doesn't know Jesus. I met him in some supermarket and I want to preach the gospel. The today's gospel goes like this. Oh, brother, Jesus loves you. He just loves you so much. And uh, yeah, he loves you. He loves you. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, he loves you so amazingly. I mean, he, he doesn't care what you do, who you are. He loves you. Yeah, I just want to tell you that. It, it's so beautiful. He loves you. So on the other side, Sam is receiving it. What is he receiving? He's receiving only one thing. What is that? Jesus. Is it full truth or half truth? What we have done is we have taken the gospel and we have reduced it to one thing that is palatable to receive. Yes, I'm not saying you have to be a gloom and doom. If you don't, if you die today, you will go to hell or heaven. I'm not talking about that. But the real gospel is this. Sam, excuse me, by the way, what's your name? Sam, wow, that's a good name. It's actually a biblical name. But let me tell you, he loves you. But the reason he loves you, because he doesn't want to see you perish. He doesn't want to see you get lost. Now, how can we get lost? We are designed to be connected with God. God connected us, designed us to be connected. There is no you, there is no creation that is designed 
to connect with the creator except the human beings so that's why he loves you he loves you so that you don't die he died for you so that you can live and that's the reason and what you're doing you're unpacking more than just he loves you he cares for you he's just there for you he supports you he's the going to heal you he's going to promote you you know this modern prophecies you know god says oh, i see a word you're going to you go something with you're going to start some business with something yes or you know you're going to have a new ministry you're going to get a new promotion i mean that's all ear tingling words we feel good about it you know but that's not the gospel i mean i have a bible here so that's why i left it up so but the gospel is you and me are dead the bible says we are dead without christ you and me are dead there is no future nothing only christ brings i know if i say this probably it's not so pleasant to the eyes and the ears but what you have done you have actually given the holy spirit to convict his spirit you know why because holy spirit is the only one can convict his spirit you can convince somebody you can win an argument with somebody but you can never convict someone whose job is that it's holy spirit job so it's the job of the holy spirit now today we don't have we don't give the job to the holy spirit we have our own methods we say you know what come for sunday check it out we have an amazing music these guys are top there they have 200000 followers i mean check it out man the instagram is full what's going to bring out of that you know this is my prayer every day i go before the lord and especially on sunday i go before the lord and i say this lord if they come to papa's house and they just got entertained i did not facilitate your presence but if they come to papa's house even one person last week very few were there and you know only if they are touched and they leave all goes to you all credit you understand the point we we have smuggled in the world system to accommodate so that we say come check it out there's a pizza night you know there's a movie night we we watch christian movies you know we will filter through no curse words and we put some movies so we are giving a pretense to the world and we call it gospel here was thank you sam thank you give it up for sam okay so here was here was peter he addressed it in a very beautiful way but it didn't really you know it didn't really be very tingling to the ears he said like this you acted in ignorance just as your rulers did also but listen to what he said for god has fulfilled what he has foretold by the mouth of the prophets so repent and the word repent i wrote down here it's not up in the in the screen and uh, uh, the greek word is called epistrefo i don't know what does that mean i'll uh, how it says it, it's not there so the word repent means epistrefo which means turn back to god be converted we need not only repent but also return home to god's grace and truth and look at this verse it says verse 19 change your inner self your old way of thinking regret past sins that's called repent today we say you know jesus loves you man he loves you the way you are come check it out you know keep loving on them it's fine we have learned to accommodate sin on the altar of love today we don't confront if somebody living together we don't go and say that is sin guys keep your hormones in the freezer before you until you get married we don't tell them hello that's a nice way to say it no because my school leader told me charles keep your hormones in the freezer because that's you know we don't say we say you know what as long as you get married as long as you truly love that person i think that's what matters is we we mention like this so change your inner self your old way of thinking regret past sins we couple of weeks ago we talked about when they when peter preached the gospel the bible says they tore their clothes and they said brothers what should we do to be changed i don't know anybody came to you and asked that can you tell me what should i do to be changed because why because it's not bringing conviction here it's palatable here tingling it feels good but you know what 
how long you can perform this that's why churches have become performance oriented we want to perform and perform and perform i went to one church the pastor said we are upgrading our sound system and we are trusting god for a million dollars to upgrade the sound system a million dollars immediately indian south indian calculated how many zeros times 80 8 crores 8 crores 8 crores can produce how many plant you can plant how many churches here i mean i was just sitting there thinking like man a million dollar i mean they have this smoke machine suddenly the spotlight light comes you know if you know the, the main lead singer and then you have this amazing they have their monitors here itself you know i mean it's so nice i mean i wish we have like that but i mean i'm not going to pay your tight money for that <laughs> you know if somebody gives we can use it but that's the point you know what i mean so all those technologies are there why because you have to bring people in in par with the stage that is already set outside if you res- re- less it reduce it they don't like it so we keep it entertained but here look at this it says very clearly repent from your past sins regret and return to god seek his purpose for your life and this is what it's so beautiful you know and uh, the word hebrew word returning to the lord means shau s h u v that's every every jewish person knows that here was peter under the anointing of the holy spirit a fisherman guy says come back to god shau come back to god it's incredible and this is what it's it's even more beautiful icing on the cake so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the lord restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day the cool wind is called gentle breeze okay this is nowhere in the bible mentioned only one place it's mentioned do you know where in the beginning when adam was in the garden he used to walk and the cool breeze and adam had a communion with god before the fall peter under the anointing of the holy spirit is saying through jesus you can have that communion back you can get back to the garden you can walk in that fullness you don't have to do anything all you need to do is to come in alignment with what already god has accomplished on the cross what when that happens your you are not re you are not pushed the one who are pushed outside the garden will be reinstated back into the garden like adam through the last adam you can enjoy the cool walk on the breeze with jesus what a powerful this this sh- this cannot come by mere reading this has to come by the anointing of the holy spirit what's man's design man's designed is to connect with the creator that is the one thing man is designed to if if that connection is lost he tries to fill it up with sex salary and status passion position and possession he tries to fill all those things but this vacuum is getting more and more empty because the real reason why is con- created is to connect with god and i said this couple of weeks ago no creation is connect d- divinely created in such a way to know more about you know the their own ways how they are created no dogs sit together and say how can i be a better dog no cows have a convention says we're going to have a holy cow convention maybe in varanasi but that's a different story you know but no cows will say let's gather together and see how we can reach out to more cows so that we can be a holy cow <clears throat> nowhere no monkeys sit together and say how can we be a better monkey there is no way why man is always seeking to be better because we are the only creature that is designed by god to have the mind of god that's why paul says oh how rich i am but then he says thanks be to god i have the mind of christ because he realizes i am rich because i lost the first estate romans 3 says he lost the first estate but thanks i have the mind of christ amen let's keep going it's amazing some of those verses we will dig into and look at this verse 21 whom heaven must keep the time of complete restoration 
of all things which about God promised through the mouth of His holy prophet. So from the beginning to the end, only one story: man messed up, God bring him back. That's it. There is nothing else. There is only one story. First Adam brought death. Last Adam brought life. First Adam introduced sin. Last Adam abolished sin. First Adam got us kicked out of the garden. Last Adam brought us back into the garden. This one story, one story throughout this. It started off in Adam. It continued, continued through every seasons. He even chose a guy. You know, Abraham was not a Jew. Hello. <laughs> you know, <laughs> some people say Abraham was a Jew. No, he was not. Read, read the story. You will know. I mean, <laughs> God created a nation out of no one. Why? Because he wants to show a model that this can happen to everyone. And that's why he sent his son. Through Jesus, we get Partic Abrahamic covenant. So one thing, he restoration of all things about which God promised. Now, moving on to verse 25, because we have quite a few things to cover. In your seed, descendant, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And I want to encourage you. And this is not a prosperity teaching. There's something that I want to tell you this. God designed you to be blessed. And that's, that's by definition. It's, it's a biblical definition. God never designed you to live in misery. Do you know that? I'm not talking your blessing defined by what premium cars you drive, you know, and uh, what premium holidays you take. You know, there are holidays and premium holidays, you're staying in Wimes here, or you know, you're staying in a Tribo, or you're staying in, you know, Yalagari, the people say, you know, where do you stay? You know, that's not the point. It's that's not what I'm talking about. Blessing of the Lord basically means is this you received Jesus, a spiritual blessing. You have zero debt. Hello. Do you know that you can be a millionaire and still have been debt? You have to run the country. You can have all the beers you want, but still you have to run away the from the country. You know the story? Huh? <laughs> Some of you are like, which one, brother? <laughs> <laughs> you can have all the beers you want. You can even call the beer is the one that fish is the king who fishes it, you know? Huh? <laughs> but still, you are running away from this country, you know? You can have everything you want. You can have all the diamonds, but still run away. Hello? Mm -hmm. That's not blessing. That's not blessing. Blessing is you received Christ. And the greatest blessing as you become parents, parents know this, the children are getting to know the Lord. Children are filled with the Holy Spirit. Children are walking with the presence of the Lord. Walking with no financial debt. I mean, there is a there are debts that is agreeable that as you grow, you know, buying a house or whatever, but you don't go on a debt to buy a pair of Prada shoes. You, you got my point. So, and then there are, you know, no sickness. This is a greatest blessing. If you, you know, one guy, actually I read this article. If you had a roof on your head, how many of you had a roof on your head? Yes. <laughs> Sister Mary is like, like this. I don't know. You had a roof on your head. No, I think so. I've been to your home, you know. And how many of you had mattress to sleep on? Yes. Yeah. Run, water, running tap, running water. Yes. They say you are 90% richer than many poor people in this world. But we take those things for granted. So blessing the means it's, it's, it's not just the, the amount of premium cars you drive, the houses you live, you know, is it yeah, what, what clothes you wear? It doesn't count. Those are all it, external things will fade away. God designed you in such a way that your family are, is blessed, that blessing will be contagious to others. That people look at you and say, well, you don't make so much money like me, but still your kids and you are walking without any depression. <laughs> you know, how come you have a smile on your face, even though you go through so many challenges? That's a blessing of the Lord. Hello. I met one guy. He's from uh, a particular uh, community in, in India. They actually finance a lot of people, uh, a lot of money. They are a particular 
Jain community. I met this guy. He has personally financed 10,000 trucks. You know, he's a, he's a big, big shot guy. But he cannot sit properly. He sits only one side like this. I asked him why G, you know, G is the word that you used to, you know, North Indian and South Indian always G, you know, what happened G? He said, I have piles. <laughs> he could not sit properly. I thank God I have no, not even one lorry. I could sit properly. He could not sit. He said, I've done many operations. Nothing works. I constantly have this piles problem. He sits like this. There's a little tube. He puts it on the top of it. He sits. He's got this chronic piles problem. Can you imagine that? I mean, you, I mean, I look at this. His house is, is extravagantly filthy rich. I mean, this unnecessary praise. You have marbles everywhere. It's, you know, you can't sit properly. <laughs> How many of you are sitting now? <laughs> You're more blessed than, <laughs> you know. So the point is this. God wants you to live a blessed life. Misery is not something that God designed. Poverty is not something God designed. Okay, moving on. God raised his servant, son Jesus, and sent him to bless you. And then this is the gospel Peter was preaching. And when you preach this gospel or when you live this gospel, something will not settle with people around you. And that's what I want to get to. And this is where we will, we will take another 10 minutes to, uh, to tie this all together. And look at verse 2. It says, while Peter was talking all these things, they heard all those guys. These guys heard all this. And this is what it says. Extremely disturbed and thoroughly annoyed. And this is where my main point is. When you preach Christ alone, people will be extremely annoyed and thoroughly disturbed. Why? Because when Jesus preached the kingdom, the Bible says in John 6, 66, everyone deserted Jesus and followed him no more. I want to tell you this. The gospel of the kingdom is not very attractive to those people of this world. Why? Because the gospel of the kingdom is an ultra gospel. So it's an upside down mentality. Jesus says, you want to give, get, give. That's not, that's not ear tingling. Hello. You want to live, die. You want to conquer, surrender. These Sadducees, you know the Sadducees? They were sad, you see, you know. <laughs> so, no pun intended. So, but these Sadducees, they were zealous people, but they don't believe in the resurrection. They believed that Messiah is going to come, but they believed that Messiah is going to come and take over the political arena. They're going to topple, he's going to topple the Roman government. He's going to be the king of all the nations. They believed it, but they believed it a little bit. Different, not little bit, contrary to what Jesus preached. And that's why they hated the fact that the king is going to die. No, I don't want the king to die. We are 400 years. Remember in Malachi to Matthew, 400 years gap. That 400 years, 430. 400 years created Judaism. In that time, the temple was lost. The temple was burnt. It was squashed. People were scattered. Romans took over. Judaism was formed. That's why you find Pharisees, Sadducees, different school of thoughts. Everybody is coming. And here was another school of thought comes and says, I'm going to preach the kingdom. What is that? This king is a different king. You want to live, you got to die. You want to go up, go down. You want to conquer, surrender. This is not ear tingling. I mean, can you imagine this? somebody comes and says, oh, you're praying, you're praying for, you know, financial freedom. I'm using this as an example. And somebody comes to you and says, maybe you don't tithe well. That's why you're constantly in debt, which is the reality. Because only the kingdom of God is the only king trust his citizens with the entire money and trust you would pay the tax back to him. 
the, the earthly kings that you work for, before you get your salary on the 31st, they take your taxes and then they give. Yes or no? <laughs> Come on. Those who get paycheck. I'm a wife. I've never got a paycheck. So yes or no? Sister Mary is saying yes. You get detected because they don't trust you. They say no. We will do it for you. We will do your taxes. Hmm? That's why we have net and gross. We have those things. But only the king of glory says, you know what? I'm going to trust you because you are not just a fellow person. You are a citizen. And I'm going to trust you that you will pay your taxes. Hello. What do you call a person who steals? Silent here. Huh? <laughs> I know it's uncomfortable. These things, we got to talk about it. Because you know why? Because that will bring you freedom. That's what here Peter was addressing. He's like, man, when he was preaching about this, people were extremely disturbed and thoroughly annoyed. And why they got annoyed? And this is the beautiful point. You know, Dr. Luke writes here, because they were teaching the people and proclaiming Jesus, the resurrection of the dead. The very guy who's supposed to topple the Roman government is now dead. And they are saying he rose again. They don't want to believe that. The church, when it preaches the resurrection of, the, of Jesus, that is the real gospel. When you just preach, Jesus loves you, Jesus cares for you, Jesus is here there to heal you, Jesus is there to bless you. When you just preach that work, all the workings of Jesus is not Jesus itself. The gospel is Jesus is the gospel, not the works of Jesus. It's two different things. Hello? We highlight the works of God, Jesus. He healed the poor. He set the captives free. All those things are true. But all those things could happen only when you embrace the source, Jesus. Sometimes it's uncomfortable to hear. You know. But you have to hear. Because that's the way we can, we can get saved. Now, look at this verse 3 and 4. I want to highlight this. They arrested them. Put them in jail until next day because it was evening. And many of those who heard the message of salvation believed in Jesus, accepted him as Christ. And the number of men came to about 5,000. So there is a fourth, third verse, kind of like a, oh man, this happened to them. But then the fourth verse says, wow, there is a result. Let me tell you this. When you preach Christ-centered gospel, you expect two things. You'll expect persecution and you expect a revival. These two things will happen. That's why we're taking this entire year to meditate on the book of Acts because I'm prophesying this under the fear of the Lord. India, persecution is coming. It has started in some other places already. It's coming. When it comes, I want you and me to be prepared to face that. If we just go to church and not be the church, you know why we, we run this entire year? This Because only one couple said, we are ready, pastor, to be the church. We will host. They got so excited. Before even I finished, they said yes. Many of them said, I'm not sure. Some of them even felt like, man, I don't know how to be the church. I don't know how to gather. But I understand that. That's why the Holy Spirit said, take this entire year, teach them. 52 weeks, we're going to meditate on the book of Acts. Are you excited? I'm excited to do this beautiful. Why? Because God willing in 2024, we will be the church in homes and in places where we will gather. We still we will gather, but we will have this experience of the power of the Holy Spirit. Like how these guys, they met in temple courts. They also met in homes. They saw the power of gospel because there will be time will come. Corporate gathering will be banned. What are you going to do? Zoom. Let me tell you how 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 many of you are blessed by Zoom. <laughs> it's Zoom. I asked pastors all over the world, so many places I have been, and I asked what did happen during this COVID time. The church grew or failed? They said no, it never grew. There was an initial, you know, cry for help from some transcendental touch, but that's it. You know, some pastors are complaining now. I heard this personally. They say, now people don't come to church because we have a, they have an option to watch on the TV. Church, 
We have lost it. Here is the gospel. When you preach the gospel, when you live the gospel, two things you expect. Persecution. But don't be alarmed by the persecution. Number two, that is the greater thing. Because what's, that's why Jesus, I mean, Paul says, for what lies hired, he considered everything lost. What is hired? There is a great reward. The Bible says here, 5,000 people came. You know, this is at, after 50 days after the Holy Spirit came. This is right after 50 days. This is not long, so long. Okay, this story is just after 50 days. 40 days, God said, don't go anywhere. On the 50th, 40th day, Holy Spirit came. Boom. This is all happening. Just thousands and thousands of people are getting saved. And as we move on, God willing, in the future weeks, on the book of Acts, you will see persecution, trials, punishments. Unnecessarily, you know, if you come to Luke, Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas got into the prison. But they are running a worship service in prison. Hello. Last Sunday, there was no power. Until 9 o'clock, yes, no, Patrick? Until 9, 10, there was no power. Generator is not working. Solar is not working. EB gone. I knelt down. I said, Lord, power. Holy Spirit said, but you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Today, without, without these things, we don't know how to worship. Hello? I mean, we, we, these things helps us. The communicate, I'm recording, there's YouTube channel, podcast, uh, you know, iTunes and all those SoundCloud. We have this, you know, motif keyboard, you know. I mean, ah, the motivations to buy the motif, you know, it's good to encourage people. But, but that's not the thing. These are all external things. What if, if you take away all this, can you still worship the Lord? What if we are banned in meeting? In, house, in churches. What if they ban even house? I've been to house churches where it's illegal even to meet in houses. Curtains are closed. Windows are shut. Doors are locked. People are quietly. In, in Europe, when the COVID time came, they told you cannot sing with your mask un, unmasked. They had a rule that. And I was in Switzerland and, and uh, you know, Indians, we also wear masks, but we mask here. Yes, we are, we are mask people. We all wear masks here. So I was like this, wearing my mask like this. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody tamped, mask up. We all, we all carry masks. So in Switzerland. Can you imagine that there's a government interfering? You cannot have your mask below your nose. The days will come where you, you will be required to take the mark. What are you going to do? Hmm? Today it's been forced. Forced, like forced so many things upon you to do things. And they say, if you don't take this, you probably won't get proper Medicare. So what's happening? There is times of persecution is coming. But listen, times of refreshing is also going to come. Amen. Because our citizenship is not here. Where is our citizenship? Amen. Amen. So that's why this whole year, I want you to prepare. Prepare. That's why the Lord is saying, prepare. Prepare in such a place, such a way that this, this, this campus will be a yeah, beacon of hope to people. That's why we are praying and trusting God to get the cattle, to get this chickens, to get this you know, vegetation going on, starting fruit trees and stuff. Why? Because there will be a time will come where we don't. There will be a need for the community. How are you going to provide for them? Hello? Are you thinking about this? I ask people, all those who have talked to me, I ask them, do you do some savings? I've asked, yes or no? Some of you do like the Indian nod, which I don't know if it is a yes or no. You know, I ask, what do you invest in? Where do you plan? Why? Because the days are coming. And this is probably not to make you feel bad, but we have hope. We have read the last chapter of the book. What is the last chapter of the book? Christ won the battle. Hallelujah. He already won. Victory is already won. We are going through the process of victory. Amen. Last but not least, I'll, I'll wrap it up here. They preached the resurrection. And what is the resurrection? I just want to highlight this. The resurrected life of Jesus is the spirit of the Father. 
I wrote down here, it's not on the screen. We are his children to the Father. We are his bride to Jesus. We are his temple to the Holy Spirit. Who are you? I'm a child of God to the Father. Who am I? I'm a bride to Jesus. Who am I? I'm a temple of the Holy Spirit. You got you to gotta nurture these truths. These are beautiful truth. You know, Jesus demonstrated the heart of the Father. Holy Spirit continued the ministry of Jesus. So, as Peter preached the resurrection of the dead, people didn't like it. What is the resurrection of resurrected life of Jesus does? It helps us to overcome fear. People got scared. Most of the time when people attack us, it's not because they hate us. They are scared. That's why they attack. You know, that's why they say all those things. But I'm praying. That what happened in Nagaland, when Modi was there, Modi ji was there, uh -huh. they were singing and the guy was praying, Lord, give this government, uh -huh. government authority to do things in your ways, in transparent. May the power of Jesus manifest. And they said, in Jesus' name, Modi was sitting like this. The prime minister, chief minister is the fifth time. He started the first music school in India. His eyes are closed and they are singing hallelujah. Do you see that video? Hello? What happened in Nagaland can happen in Tamil Nadu. Amen? Hello? Do you have faith? Brother, I'm not from Tamil Nadu. I'm from Kerala. Can happen in Kerala also. Amen? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> can happen in Maharashtra. <laughs> can happen in anywhere. Amen? Because why? Because God is turning its tide. Guys, let me tell you. Don't pray against persecution. But don't pray for persecution. Just pray, God, have your way. And in the way, two things happen. Persecution, revival. Persecution, revival. Amen. And that's a beautiful thing. Resurrected life of Jesus reminds us that life is in the hands of God. Amen. That's one thing for sure. Who's, who, who's got, you know, your life? Your life is in the hand of God. That's it. Nobody has got your life. He's got the life. I mean, it's not over until God says it's over. Resurrected life of Jesus enables us to trust in the sovereignty of God. Job did that. He trusted in the sovereignty of God. He said, God, you know it all. I do believe India will see a new, fresh revival. Amen. Like what we received, saw in Osbury, what we saw in early 1906 in the Pentecostal movement, in the Azusa revival. India will again see a revival. That happens here. So. This is my latest prayer for my kids. I say, God, let the revival start in my home. Amen. Amen. So let's pray for that. Don't say, Lord, my church, only four people come start there. No, start here in my home. Put your hands on your kids. Say, Lord, let it start. Put your hand on your spouse. Revival start. Revival start. You know, let's start here in our houses. The Bible says, you know, glory will fall. And from here, it will go to the nations. Resurrected life of Jesus teaches us to live joyfully under all circumstances. That's what Peter was saying. You know what? You can put us in prison. The Bible says, the last chapter of chapter 5, if you read, I'm giving you a sneak preview. They got beaten up and they released him. And they released, they didn't go and sue the government. You know what they said? I'll give you a sneak peek. In a couple of weeks, God willing, we'll talk about it. They counted worthy to be suffering for Jesus. <laughs> I mean, for me, when I read that, I got convicted. I don't know whether I can say that. I counted worthy to suffer for Jesus. That's the beautiful gospel here. The resurrected life of Jesus gives us, teaches us to live a joyful life under all circumstances. The resurrected life of Jesus gives us the boldness to share the glorious gospel. Sometimes you got to stand your feet and, and say, you know what? I don't take part in this. One of the gospel of the kingdom, when you preach, you cannot tolerate gossip. Do you know that? Do you know that? People will die. Like, hey, Sharon, you used to say jokes like that. You used to make, you used to, you know, tell us about that. No, you don't do it anymore. Why? Because there is some deeper conviction. We don't talk about others. Why? Because there is the resurrected life of Jesus lives in you. Religion does. <laughs> Resurrected life of Jesus gives us the grace to endure and to overcome. And last but not the least, the resurrected life of Jesus eagerly waits for the kingdom that is now and yet to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, 
This is the message Peter preached. He said, the resurrected, you killed. It's okay. Out of ignorance, you know, we heard that statement, no? Ignorance is a bliss. <laughs> then wisdom is a folly, I guess. You know, if it, you killed out of ignorance, okay, fine. But this is what happens. Repent. Come back to God. If you come, I'll come back. You'll come back to the refreshing. Times of refreshing will come on a cool day. What is he saying? They know. Adam was kicked out. They read the Torah. Cool day. Breeze. Because nowhere it stays. Breeze. They remembered. Oh, yes. Oh, he's saying, if I come back to God, repent, I get back in the garden. Can you imagine this? Imagine Adam, couple of kids. You know, what is the two kids' name? Cain and Abel. Got kicked out. So now they don't live in the campus. Imagine this is the garden. You got kicked out. You are living in the Porambok, this side. Hmm? And Adam's kids saying, Daddy, what is this place? Nice. Looks like a promised land, this campus. You said you used to live here? Wow. We are living on this Porambok. No man's land with full of thorns and bushes. What would Adam would say? Son, it's all because of your mom. <laughs> I'm just keeping you awake. It's all because of your mom, son. She gave me that stupid apple to eat. <laughs> what would he say? Huh? Can you imagine that? You are tilling the land. I mean, here you dig in 47 feet, 57 feet, we found the water. The next door, they dig 1,000 feet, no water. Why? Promised land. Pachepan was there. So imagine you got kicked out. You are staying there on the Parambok. Thorns, everything is mess. Standing there. You are looking at this. You got kicked out. And that's what Peter was saying. Repent. Come back to God. So you can get back on the cool breeze. The times of refreshing will come back. That's gospel. People don't like to hear sometimes. You know why? Because changing means leaving behind something. Today's gospel is you can get to do whatever you are doing. Still God loves you. Jesus has become an accessory, an add-on. add, add on, Not necessarily the main ingredient. He's one of those Tabasco sauce. You pour it on your life to spice it up. Jesus is not a Tabasco sauce. Hello? Jesus is not the Chick-fil-A sauce that you pour it on your boring salad so that the salad can be made spicy. Jesus is your life. Why don't we all stand? Thank you, Jesus. Father, oof. We are sorry for times that we just drifted so far to have a convenience-based Christian lifestyle, not a commitment Christian lifestyle. And Lord, today you once again, in your great love, convicted us that we ought to call, we ought to live a lifestyle that is worthy of how you designed just like you filled Peter with the power of the Holy Spirit, with great boldness. I pray you will give us the same boldness, Lord, to witness, to stand firm. You so love the world you gave your son. Lord, I pray that you will give us the same love to love the world, that love that brings clarity, out of confusion. The love that brings hope in the midst of hopelessness. The love that brings life in the midst of death. The love that brings joy in the midst of depression. The love that brings resurrected power of Jesus in the midst of ashes. Come Holy Spirit. Come. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I just hear the word for Benny and Sharon. 
the spirit of god is breathing over you yes breathing over you yes i don't know i just pray for a greater boldness to come upon you thank you jesus i don't know where is sharon thank you father thank you thank you lord somebody put your hand on benny please we're going to just pray for greater boldness i don't know why i just hear this word boldness boldness yes yes greater boldness to stand firm uncompromised lifestyle you may lose couple of friends that's okay you may be called names it's okay god has given you a mandate to live the great commission i was hungry you gave me food to eat i was naked you clothed me i was thirsty you gave me water i was in prison you came to visit me there is a there is an anointing god is breaking over you like like i see like a like an anointing flow that is on aaron's beard that's flowing is breaking over you and sharon and it's spilling over the kids to love the unlovable yes to stand firm uncompromised even among your family i don't know anything about it but they may not even agree with your lifestyle but god has called you to live that thank you jesus thank you father holy spirit we thank you thank you sister mary put your hand on on gifta please you just speak life over her right now i just hear the word shalom over you i hear the word shalom anything that is bothering you right now i pray father come come over her yes you don't have to fight for being accepted at all no that striving is gone right now in jesus name you are approved accepted delighted desired by the heavenly father there is no need now on the need for approval the need to be desired wanted appreciated yes all gone right now cancel in jesus name you are desired by the father you are designed by his intelligence you are you are loved unconditionally yes shalom like a peace like a river will flow over you right now over your mind yes i hear the word you are a god pleaser you are a god pleaser no one can despise you because you are young yes i see you with among the crowd around you i see so many people that are above your age but there is a wisdom that god has deposited as you open your mouth they're going to listen because of the anointing of the holy spirit that is upon you thank you jesus don't let anyone despise you you are young thank you jesus